वेलकम टू न्यूज लॉन्ड्री छोटा हफ्ता फॉर द फुल एपिसोड सब्सक्राइब बिकॉज इट इज बिहाइंड द पे वॉल एंड ओनली सब्सक्राइबर्स गेट एक्सेस टू अनकट कंप्लीट कॉन्टेंट न्यूज लॉन्ड्री हफ्ता इज आ वीकली रैप of all that made the news all that didn't and all that should have and all that shouldn't have we agree we disagree we critique and occasionally we beat each other up but it's all good fun subscribe this is a news laundry podcast and you're listening to nl hafta angrez apna lagan aur news laundry apna hafta kabhi nahi chhodte welcome to another episode of hafta today is the 27th of january and we're recording this at 11 in the morning we usually record on thursday but since it was republic day yesterday we are recording one day late and for those of you who haven't noticed i am dressed in saffron and green no one that's noticed green? it's green brown uh, normally okay, you are color blind doesn't matter right. <laughs> it's a green does it look like green okay it doesn't matter we, we digress <sighs> so i hope uh, you uh, took a moment and considered the importance of a constitution of a republic and what it stands for and all these other things uh, while there was lots of politics played during republic day which we shall talk about in the rest of the hafta uh, before i introduce the panel just wanted to remind you to subscribe and pay to keep news free because when the public pays the public is served and when corporations and governments pay corporations and governments are served and i will start off with this just one email because it is about subscription by amir parker who has got a very good idea which we shall share with the product team Hello team I've been following your podcast regularly gives a weekly rundown on some perspectives of key news events abhi your interview of salvatore babun was cringe and i think you need to up your game great to have raman sir on the panel most of the times he brings in perspectives and experience that are quite different manisha lost all her goodwill and she said she doesn't like some movie or series i forgot the name <laughs> clearly you really love that movie <laughs> for to not remember i wrote to make a session on the nl sena projects for the money raised is it possible to open your portal in some subsidized way for people example if i pay 7.5k for a sena project i would rather buy membership worth 7.5k for students and other freeloaders hmm. that way you hit two birds with one stone nice having said that i'd like to contribute 7500 to the joshi mat sena project in the form of student memberships So Amir uh, our product team will get in touch with you but this is a very good idea because for the Sena we give you usually some uh, um, merchandise mugs hoodies shirts and a lot of you say that you know you already have mugs so getting five mugs news learning mugs doesn't really add value uh, so maybe this is the thing we will do it's a great idea we shall share it with the product team and thank you this is what makes news laundry what it is most of our ideas have come from you guys only so thanks so Listen to people like Amir, pay to keep news free, and Amir, we shall get in touch with you. Uh, before we get in the headlines, the panel in the studio today we have Raman sir, hi, Manisha Pandey, hello, I'm Abhinandan Sekri, and joining us on the phone line is Akar Patel. Hi, Akar. How are you? So most of our listeners already know who Akar Patel is. Those of you who don't, uh, Akar is an Indian journalist, is an activist, is an author. He served as head of Amnesty International in India between 2015 and 2019. I'm sure you had. read all those reports about amnesty's accounts being frozen and stuff like that he currently serves as chair of the board of amnesty international in india and he has been a regular regular columnist for a variety of platforms if you just google it you'll see lots of his writings so good to have you akar thank you for making the time thank you for having me and also um we had also promised our listeners last week that this week we will have uh we will also have an a lawyer on the panel so that we can discuss the NJAC the judicial appointments process and the uh, kya uh, structure the the basic structure of constitution argument between right. vice president has jumped in with mr rijiju and the chief justice uh, however the lawyer who was uh, one of the editors of one of the prominent legal portals uh, had a bereavement in the family so they had to pull out at the last minute uh, but we shall get someone next week for sure because this is something we want to discuss with legal experts But right now, let's get on the headlines and discuss with Akar what made the news this week. Manisha, can you give us the headlines, please? Yes, the Modi government has asked Twitter and YouTube to remove links related to the BBC's documentary about Prime Minister Narendra Modi's role in the 2002 Gujarat riots. The emergency blocking orders were issued under the IT Technology Rules 2021. The documentary was shown at University of Hyderabad on Saturday prompting authorities to seek a report following this a screening was scheduled on Tuesday in JNU where students have alleged that they were attacked with stones 
There was a power and internet outage at the campus. Uh, you can watch our report on it. Uh, our reporters were there till wee hours of the morning looking at what was happening. And after this, uh, there was also a screening scheduled in Jamia and the students who had uh, organized the screening were detained by the Delhi police. Congress leader Anil Antony resigned from the party on Wednesday, a day after he tweeted that placing views on the BBC above those of Indian institutions undermines the country's sovereignty. He also said that the BBC has a long history of prejudice against India and he said he was severely trolled after this and that he shall resign. Meanwhile, a Gujarat court on Tuesday acquitted 22 two persons accused of killing 17 Muslims, including two children during the 2002 riots due to lack of evidence. Of the 22 accused, eight had died during the trial. Mm. The other big news of the week is a sensational report released by short seller Hindenburg Research that accuses Adani Enterprise of pulling off the largest con in corporate history. The report took two years of investigation and makes various assertions against Adani Enterprise ranging, ranging from bad corporate governance to downright stock manipulation and accounting fraud. The Adani group has done what it does usually, threaten legal action. But not followed through yet. Yeah. And they've also said that this was a maliciously timed report around their FPO and that they're going to issue a point-by-point -point rebuttal. Hindenburg, meanwhile, said that they welcome legal action. Amid the row over the centre and judiciary over judicial appointments, Union Law Minister Kiran Rijiju on Monday said that it would be wrong to think that existing systems will continue forever. And would never be questioned. Mm. <laughs> this this battle is getting bigger. No, I mean it's clear the government wants to wants to go all the way on this yeah. one. Yeah, uh, the minister also said that it's a matter of grave concern that certain portions of sensitive reports of the IB and the RAW were released in the public domain by the Supreme Court Collegium. The Union Sports Ministry on Saturday suspended Vinod Tomar, the Assistant Secretary of the Wrestling Federation of India, amid allegations of sexual harassment against top officials and coaches. Bajrang Punia, Vinesh Fogad, Sarita Moore and Sakshi Malik, uh, the wrestlers who had staged protests at Jantar Mandir for three days, expressed disappointment that they were not consulted before the formation of the committee that's going to look into the sexual harassment charges. And apparently they were com I mean, they were told that they will be, it will be approved, I mean, it'll, the, the committee will go through them. But this guy who's been suspended, why him and not Mr. Brij Bhushan himself? I don't understand, like, the allegations are at the top, right? He hasn't been, huh, he, he just left. I mean, he left no, his position. No, no, he's been suspended. He's been... It, no, it, it, he hasn't quit. He is uh, going, he, going to step aside or something, not step down. Uh, what, has he resigned? Step aside. What does that mean? If I have it right, I think his term ends February. So... He's what? Sorry? Just... Term ends February. I'm sorry. His term... Achha, uh, so, so they're saying that term ends. Yes. I think that is what I read. But normally, they, they, they are there for perennially, you know. They, they yeah, will never go This out. is his third <laughs> he was there term that he's serving. 12 years. 12 years. Union Health Minister Mansuk Mandavia and Science and Technology Minister Jitendra Singh on Thursday launched biotechnology company Bharat Biotech's intranasal coronavirus vaccine. Hmm. The Supreme Court on Wednesday granted interim bail for eight weeks to Ashish Mishra. He's the son of Union Minister Ajay Mishra, who's accused in the Lakhimpur Kheri violence. The same week that Dera Sacha Sauda chief also yeah, gets his. Yeah, uh, Dera Sacha Sauda got a 40-day parole. He just had a birthday, I think. No, no, it's no, something. No. <laughs> He's kicked off some eco-friendly week or something. <laughs> he said he should cut five cakes or whatever. Mm. He was seen cutting a cake with a sword. So, and Haryana CM uh, ML Khattar's political advisor, Kishan Bedi, and the BJP Rajya Sabha MP, Krishnan Lal Pawar, was spotted attending his satsang and seeking his blessings for an upcoming state event. So elections are on. So those of you who don't remember, uh, Guru Ram Rahim Singh Ji Insan, the film star behind uh, some mm. of the worst cinema ever created, uh, was in for rape and murder. Yeah. And this is his for third or fifth parole since he's been in. Mm. Count he, I, I mean, think he keeps coming around out. Around four or five. Every time there's yeah. any... Around uh, four or five. Union Minister Rajiv Chandrasekhar on Tuesday said that the centre will hold discussions with stakeholders before implementing a proposal that would require online platforms to take down any content identified as fake by PIB or any other agency authorised for fact-checking by the government. So that is on hold for now. And yeah. they're going to invite, I hope they're calling all digital news organizations Let's like us. Let's see, I don't know. Digipub <laughs> should be there. The Uttar Pradesh police on Sunday registered a case against 12 officers for killing a man accused of cow slaughter. Let's see what Allegedly happens Allegedly killing a man. Yeah. I mean, I think this is, judging by the standards we have today, this is huge that they've, yeah. You know, a case has even been registered. Union Minister for Petroleum and Natural Gas, Hardeep Singh Puri, on Sunday urged oil marketing companies to cut petrol and diesel prices if crude oil prices in the international market decrease. 
the Gujarat police on Sunday issued an arrest warrant against the promoter of the Oreva Group, which was given the contract for renovation of bridge in the Morbi district. Mm. And during a Wednesday hearing, Oreva Group said that some very highly placed entities persuaded it to take over repair and operation of the bridge. Group of 87 former civil servants on Sunday urged President Draupadi Murmu to advise central government to immediately stop the rupees 72,000 crore mega project on Great in Nicobar Island. Shah Rukh Khan's Pathan became the first Bollywood film ever to gross rupees 600 crore at worldwide box office in one day, and there have been like not you know, 600, 100. Oh, there's a six hundred. Ah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, hundred crore. <laughs> you predicted. Uh, I have no me. idea why I said six hundred. Mm. Clearly says hundred. Anyway, hundred crore on its uh, worldwide box office, mm. and your Twitter timeline is probably full of like videos of people celebrating and dancing in yeah. movie halls, and it's a huge celebration. Assam Chief Minister Himanta Biswa Sarma on Sunday wrote on Twitter that he is assured Shah Rukh Khan that no untoward incident will take place in the state during the screening of Pathan. It's been. Fairly okay, except Madhya Pradesh, where you had some of these Hindutva hmm. groups protesting and chanting obnoxious slogans. 67 journalists killed in 2022, 50% more than 2021. Says so the, CPG the world is not getting any better for journalists. Yeah. It's Padma Award time. Mulayam Singh Yadav, Zakir Hussain are among six to get India's second highest civilian honor. Although the SP is saying uh, Mulayam Singh Yadav should be given the Bharat Ratna, not just oh. the Padma Vibhushan. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> Pakistan's currency fell to a record low of Rs. 255 against the US dollar on Thursday, according to local media reports. And this is because they've been asked to decontrol or government has been asked to step aside from uh, controlling the exchange rate. And this is an exchange of a loan apparently that they're going to get from from Washington, I guess, either IMF or World Bank or whoever. Mm. Former US Secretary of State Mike Pompeo's book is in the news. Uh, it makes several assertions like India and Pakistan came close to a nuclear war in 2019 and that US intervention prevented an escalation. And he's also said some rather unkind things about Sushma Suraj. Well, he hasn't said. He said that Jay Shankar said some rather unkind things about Sushma no, Suraj. But even he said so. He's also said, he's said, also yeah. said, he said she was a political non-entity and she was a goofball is the word he's used. Yeah. And, uh, no, he he actually attributes that ah, to Jay he's Shankar. Attributing to he's Jay attributed Shankar. goofball to Jay Shankar. Yeah. Yes, and he says in response that he threatens Jay Shankar jokingly with the words that I am also a uh, redneck goofball of words to that uh, effect. And Jay Shankar replies saying that, oh, but you went, you uh, edited the Harvard Law Review or something like that. Wow. <laughs> so okay. Basically, he said that Jay attributed is... to Jay Shankar. And in the book, he's also kind of uh, said that their close association with Khush, uh, the Salman, the Saudi prince, after the murder of Adnan Khushoji, was Jamal, Jamal Khushoji, sorry, was a big middle finger to the US media. I mean, and this guy is scoping, positioning himself to be the Republican nominee. I don't know who's worse, he or Trump. I mean, really, man, America's... And there's such a... I mean, this is so childish. It's like Sambit Patra level. Ki bhai, we showed a middle finger to the media. They showed it to But anyway, uh, so first, um, Akar, uh, have you seen this documentary film in question? Yeah, so Akar, uh, tell me, what do you think the government has achieved or has, uh, has it backfired? Because... Uh, there are some questions even in our subscribers have mailed that this actually will always help Modi whenever 2002 comes up during elections and you know just about a year from election although I do believe one year is a long time election no one's going to remember this next March or April when people are voting but anyway some people think that it is going to help him in you know the elections this year which are eight eight states do you think it has any impact on elections one way or the other no, and I think that it re-establishes Mr. Modi as the sort of person he has been and has shown himself to be for a couple of decades. It doesn't say anything new in that sense about him. Um, I think it was a mistake to ban the documentary because A, it shows how effete the state is in our time at banning such things. It can't do it in the, in the world of WhatsApp and Facebook. Somebody or the other will always put it up. Why send down laws you cannot enforce. I think that's the first thing. The second thing is it was slightly hashed. Is the second part of the documentary banned? We don't know. It's being circulated freely. Uh, <laughs> does the ban apply only okay, to that so part one? Sarkari incompetence uh, even in the ban. Okay. 
Chopin would not have the courage to participate in it without having taken permission from the PMO, mm. for sure. Which means that before the documentary was released, the list of questions that he was asked and the answers he gave them would have reached the PMO. I don't know whether the, he read it or not. Mm. G- given that fact, it's it's quite bizarre that you should say that you're surprised and shocked and angered by this thing because you knew what its contents were. Right. Yeah. I think it would have been better to let it slide. If you ban something and opposition politicians are tweeting it and their tweets remain untouched and students in universities are showing it and, you know, it is shown. That's, that, 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 that is what shows weakness. I see. The, yeah, the exactly. strong man image survives as long as you can convince people that you are able to do what it is that you set out to do. Hmm. Yeah, it's a clunky response. I mean, precisely because you can't really effectively ban it. You can't be a China. That's his name. Yeah. Sabkuch, and, you will just not thing, be able Manisha, to watch as, it. As a journalist, you know, you know that the story, the, this BBC publishes documentary on Modi was not a story. The New York Times would have let it slide. Modi bans BBC documentary that on him. That was correct. Yeah. yeah. So there's an inconsistency what he says. Like, you know, it's like odd even. But today I'm free speech absolutist, yeah. tomorrow I'm going to do whatever. So which means that if China tells you to do something or, you know, Saudi Arabia, then you're not an absolutist. I mean, you either you are, you can't be, I'm against death penalty, except when the, when the case is very heinous. You know, then you're not against I think the death penalty. Right. That, that the law in the US doesn't actually empower the government to go, because the free speech, the, uh, the, First, the Amendment. First Amendment in the US is, is, quite, is quite severe on the state. It's been very unusual. It has never happened, in fact, that a leader survives a riot of that scale. Normally, what would happen is, whatever party was is in power, you know, starting with Gujarat in the late 60s, uh, w- what would happen is after a spate of violence that the state was not able to control, they would, you would change your leader. It happened in Bombay in 92 and so on. Every time. He's the only man to have remained in office after having... Uh, presided over, participated in, looked away from whatever words we want to use, violence of this scale. And so that notoriety stayed with him in a way that it couldn't with the others. The national media kept pointing that out to him, which angered him. But his cadre, the RSS was fully behind him, as was the BJP, because they they knew what we know now, that this is popular, Mm. that this kind of strong... What is the 56-inch chest claimed for? What act of bravery? Mm. Mm. It is the fact that you are able to absorb this kind of violence and uh, depict yourself as as a strong man. It's shameful, but it's true. Also, I the think... National media. Sorry, sorry. Also, I think this 56 inch also comes from that he withstood the assault of the media. I mean, Modi really sees himself as a victim. I mean, I, I do believe, in, you know, apologies for those who think I'm trying to be a psychologist but I do believe people who cry very easily see themselves as victims generally they are, they see themselves as we against the world we are such wonderful people and the world is so unkind to us those are the kind of people who cry yeah. easily like Mr. Modi is a really smart man I, I don't think anyone should have any doubt about that but how did he crack the media code that this is the solution this is what I need to do to get that kind of acceptance you think he has a really competent center, uh, set of advisor or is it his own understanding of this space that is so astute? There are three There are three things which are, the first is he's, he's really good at what he does in this sense. Uh, the, the three things are A, there is a structural problem with the media in India. No, even in South Asia, newspapers don't cost 3 and 5 rupees. In Pakistan, Bangladesh, they are 25, 30 rupees. We are dependent inordinately on um, advertising. The union government is the largest advertiser in India. Between PSUs and the center, it's 2,400 crore rupees a year. 200 crore of discretionary money going out every month. Mm. On the other side of that, there is the danda. Raghav Bell, one of the most famous journalists anywhere in the world, denied a license to broadcast because he was seen as a security threat. Mm. Between license and the other favors that the government can give and the advertising money, that's one aspect of it. So he may go after BBC, you know, he may come up with cases of money laundering or whatever. So so I think it's the fear that he's striking. And uh, of course, I mean, uh, Danda, as uh, Akar says, is uh, by way, way of giving advertisement and stopping advertisement, hmm. that is there. But even after advertisements, we have seen uh, if, uh, you know, the media group just goes a little haywire he just comes up, uh, you know, with cases against them. Right. In fact, during the Gujarat elections, there were so many, I mean, we could never put anything on print or speak about it openly. But there were so many murmurs about 
very clear directions given to major language press of not prominently displaying Arvind Kejriwal's rallies hmm. or AAP's uh, statements on the front page because they did view them as sort of A this upcoming. Threat. Yeah, and everyone off the record editors and all spoke of advertising packages which were given and also very clear kind of instructions that you don't place this person on the front page. And So, uh, I mean, by the end of it, I, I'm guessing this will have See, more no, viewership no. than it would ordinarily yeah. have had. I think it more will, people are curious what's there in the document. Any Let's kind watch. of ban is counterproductive. I mean, look at uh, the ban on liquor in Bihar. So what is happening in Bihar? So similarly, I mean, a I mean, ban on this. But sometimes it works in the long run. I think in do- document it doesn't work, but sometimes bans do work. I think, uh, you know. Mostly like, it is counterproductive. Uh, j- yeah, I mean, f- oh, f- I guess... Uh, but Just say that the ban is valid. How many people would believe the mm. reasons that were cited? But a, know, that it, it will disturb relations with foreign nations. Yeah. Which foreign nations? <laughs> 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 uh, Law and order. Like, uh, you know, like the, the, the one thing that the South Asian state does well is law and order. <laughs> that danda, because it doesn't, it cares nothing for the rights of citizens. It'll beat you up immediately. Uh, so that is the context. So Manisha, what have you made of this story? It, it, this is a really long report. Has anyone been able to go through the whole thing? I haven't. Mm-hmm. I haven't been able to go through the long, uh, the whole report. But it's pretty fascinating. One, by the way, I was very curious yesterday whether NDTV will, will cover this or not. And I went to NDTV.com. Hmm. And they have a lot of previous reports on Hindenburg's uh, shorting. Hmm. You know, they did it with Elon Musk. And then there was a very famous company. I forget the name. But that significantly lost. Nokia. Nikola. They did Nokia no. also. Nokia? Nikola. Nikola. The, Nikola. The Nikola. Exactly. Exactly, Nicola, which completely tanked, and then there was an inquiry also initiated. So they had all that, and they didn't have NDTV, which <laughs> they didn't have uh, the latest one on Adani. So I mm. thought that was really funny. I think there are two aspects in the report which is quite interesting to note, and I think there should be some follow up in our own press to this. I'm really surprised. Yeah, like, 23 and 24 year old. Yeah, it says Shad and Daria hardly seems capable of complex audit 23 work. 23 and 24. Yeah. That's really surprising because even Tucha companies like News Laundry. Exa- you know, when whenever investors do talk, they said they have to be ordered by the big four. I said, bloody big four, how much they'll charge is bloody one month subscription. Have yeah. a heart, you know. <laughs> and very systematically, they are showing the SEBI was aware of, uh, you know, uh, these things. SEBI was aware of, you know, what is what was happening. They were fined very heavily. Then their fine was, was reduced. reduced. When they were doing business with Ketan Parekh. No, they were fined by who? The By SEBI. SEBI. Achha, SEBI, Sebi. Fined These okay. are the SEBI documents. I see, okay. They have given just the SEBI documents. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And now all those SEBI documents are very clearly showing and they are, they are holding him guilty. Of market uh, manipulation. With, with, when, when the Ketan Parekh happened right. you know, in, way back in 19... This is post uh, Big Bull. Post, ha, ha. I think this was about I think ha. four or five so years it after. It also shows that they, his, his elder brother still has links with Ketan Parekh and his company his companies. It also shows that Ketan Parekh's daughter is working, you know, in one of the offshore uh, company, company which is completely, which has, uh, you know, invested 99% of its money into Adani. All of you listening in, the Chota Hafta, do subscribe so you can listen to the entire Hafta. We will see you again next week with the Hafta. Till then, subscribe, pay to keep news free because when the public pays, the public is served and advertisers pay. Advertisers are served. Thank you. Goodbye. All the News Laundry podcasts are available on Stitcher, iTunes and any other podcast platform. Please subscribe to News Laundry. Help us keep news independent. To catch all our podcasts on news, pop culture, current affairs and sport, visit newslaundry.com. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. And subscribe to our YouTube channel. Sunli Afrika, Mufat Khoro. Not to brag or anything, but News Laundry Hafta features in the top 50 in the world on SoundCloud in the news and politics category for podcasts. So do subscribe and see what you're missing because when the public pays, the public is served. When advertisers pay, advertisers are served. Subscribe, help keep news independent and free. All News Laundry podcasts are available on iTunes and Stitcher and any other podcast platform.